All right, it's Roland from East Marsh Acres, and uh, we've been busy this, this morning already. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of a tour as to exactly what we're doing. Um, it's a gloomy fall day. Uh, they're predicting rain this afternoon. I suspect that's what's coming. So if you see the dark clouds out off in the distance, uh, I think that's probably going to happen. Um, so this morning, what I did is lay out another paddock for the chickens. So we've had the chickens uh, in behind the house here for a while. Um, we had them um, for two weeks. One week uh, up here by the uh, top of the house. And now, of course, it's all dug up with a trench for the tiny house. And then last week, they were down there. Um, you can see the the area that uh, has been cleared off and then this week they were here and so they've done a pretty good job of decimating the forest in between and then next week they'll be here um, working on this particular section and the week after we'll have them in here and then if they're still out um, if the uh, weather still holds so we'll have them in here eventually so it's two weeks from now and then three weeks from now this last little section uh, they do such a good job in terms of clearing the uh, the land uh, so they were here for two weeks in a row and essentially the only thing that we've done is taken down the uh, the taller branches the things that they don't actually eat but other than that, they cleared most of it. And they, again, are primarily responsible for clearing much of the ground this summer in and around this side and uh, the other side of the garden itself. So this area They've done most of the clearing in that area and most of the clearing in here. You can see where they have not been because uh, the, the diversity of cover. So all of this were not uh, over there. But uh, you can see where they have been because uh, there's essentially grass left uh, behind them. Right, so this morning what I did also is pull all of the, um, so we had uh, both uh, hoses uh, running from the house, so we could have water over here, and electricity running from the house uh, through the stream bed uh, over here, or through the swale. There's not much of a stream most of the time, just in the spring. And... Uh, so those are all wrapped up. Um, by the way, we had a conversation with an electrician, uh, Matt, um, whose house is right over there. Uh, he's an electrician and he's going to actually do uh, our work for us and uh, uh, get uh, power to the tiny house. And uh, this receptacle here that we used originally to power our trailer, the RV trailer that we had here. So this receptacle is going to be changed from an RV receptacle to a receptacle that uh, we can use for 120 uh, outdoor power. So we can power the, uh, the water uh, piece for the chickens out here and we can put power back into the shed. So that's what that uh, particular um, wire is for. Um, we are going to be clearing the uh, high tunnel at this point. Um, we'll also be continuing to clear uh, the rest of the garden. So we've got uh, that uh, outside bed is clear now. Uh, this side bed is clear except for the volunteer tomatoes. There are still quite a bit of brachias, um, uh, cabbage type plants uh, on here 
and we will harvest those. Uh, the um, kale, um, burenkool, uh, farmer's cabbage is the way we call it in, in Dutch, um, is, uh, will probably stay for a while. Uh, this particular bed is empty and we still have some flowers actually growing here so we'll empty this bed as well. And then we'll pull it from the tarp that uh, you'll see here over top. This morning we also took delivery of uh, another load of uh, 20 bales of straw and uh, that straw is coming essentially from a farm that's just over here on the other side of the creek from us um, and uh, is being farmed by uh, a farmer that's very uh, very friendly. Uh, anyways I also took out the the uh, fence that was underneath the um, beans that was uh, along here and took out uh, what four of the uh, tea posts. Uh, so these are tea posts. Uh, I took those out this morning as well. Um, this is where the potatoes were so they're gone. We'll need to take the uh, the squash that we've actually got um, out of here as well. There's a few of them. Um, you can see them. Not a huge harvest. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think they're butternut squash, and that's about all that we've got. Um, and we'll need to take the uh, sunflowers out of here as well. Anyways, the majority of what we're doing this afternoon, in anticipation of the rain, is coming in here and pulling the tomatoes out. Uh, so, um, taking the tomatoes that are ripe off of the uh, containers, or off of the plants, and... Um, We'll end up taking all the string down. I guess I should get a knife out. Huh? Oh, you already have one. Ooh, ooh, look at that. That was the one that was on the, the thing up there by the shed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll clear all of this out uh, in anticipation of our lovely chickens coming to reside in here this, um, this coming winter. All right, so let's get to work and I'll bring you up to date as we're going along. Hi, so we're moving along and uh, this is what we have done. Uh, so this is the uh, southern row and there's the northern row. row. Uh, I'm a little bit slower than uh, Patricia is for some reason or other. Well, I think it's because I don't have a knife. Um, and. Uh, so Henry is filling up very, very quickly in terms of all of the tomatoes that are in here. Mostly unripe, but there are some. And some peppers. Some nice ones still. Very few, but compared to what we have had. And we're also taking all of the plastic clips that we've used to manage or train the tomatoes with and uh, those are coming off relatively easy but it takes, still takes a little bit of work and there's nasturtiums left and some pepper plants on the outside here uh, I think we can pull those as well but all of this kind of stuff um, we have to make sure the tomato plants are out but uh, tomato um, fruit and uh, pepper plants and nasturtiums we think are okay for the uh, chickens to actually eat so we will probably be leaving those in uh, taking all of the, the string out of here but essentially uh, harvesting as much as we possibly can out of the crop itself all right so that's an update and uh, We'll probably work for a little bit longer yet and uh, uh, see how far we can get. All right, talk to you soon.
so the end of Saturday we're done a lot of work look at this big pile of leaves or tomato, tomato plants. plants so because our chickens are going to be in here they can't have tomato plants so <clears throat> there's still nasturtiums in here which are good for chickens so I think and just peppers. and peppers so I think before we let them in here we'll kind of pick Break through it. Break through yeah. there so we get all the leaves of the tomatoes. And uh, hopefully they'll be okay or they know not to eat it. <laughs> Whatever. <Yeah. clears> if <throat> they come across a stray one. But we have to fix the inside of the hoop house yet anyways. So you can see that there's um, wood there. So from the wood down we're going to put hardware cloth all the way around. Um, just to so there's a one by six down at the ground, and there's a yeah. one by six about two feet up. So we can we can uh, nail it to there, and uh, same thing on this side. Yeah. So I don't know what we're going to do along the sides, but yeah. And then we'll bring the bring the chicken uh, shaw in through the back door, just like we took it out. Uh, in the spring. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to take the shade cloth off the end. Yeah. Um, and the wiggle wire. But, so I think uh, we'll have to put that up temporary. Anyways, we'll figure out the uh, the hardware cloth situation and that will be another video on how we can chicken proof our hoop house. Not so, chicken proof it, but... Oh uh, no, no, chicken proof it. Predator proof yeah. our chicken house hoop house for the winter. Yep. Anyways, take care. See you next time.